welcome back to another episode of All That to Say. That's right. Welcome, welcome all. It's good to see you, Nick. Good to see you, Corey. All right. So we've had some varied topics all over the place. For all over the place. So I've got something I want to run your way. Okay. And uh, it's from 1 Corinthians. Okay. 11, 7. I'm going to read it to you. Okay. It's coming out of the me. gate. Yep. Okay. A man should not wear anything on his head when worshiping. For man is made in God's image and reflects God's glory, and woman reflects man's glory. So, uh, that's the NLT version. So I, I came across this. I was reading, and uh, obviously, you can never just cherry pick a scripture, right? So you got to look at the whole context of it. It's all about worship. It's about like how we present ourselves and what method and and you know, like a woman covering her head, a man covering her head. And, you know, I mean, understanding the context of the culture was is that they were in the blazing sun. Most of a lot of times they were in the desert. So they it was normal for them to cover themselves. But I came across this and I thought, he says very clearly, man should not wear anything on his head when worshiping. And I instantly thought about the debate that happens in church in today's culture in 2023 Okay, about... People wearing hats. Hats. Wow. This is <laughs> <laughs> found scriptural backing for no hats and I don't know. This might be a stretch. <laughs> oh no, no. I, I think it totally is, right? But there are people who build doctrines or build church processes and rules and regulations. Yeah. Based on things like that. Yeah. They take a single scripture out of out of context, and they're like, yeah. Right, right. Because actually, I think it's interesting, the flip side is actually tells a woman is to cover her head. Yeah. So and women so, are supposed to wear hats. Right. So the, the so I remember when, you know, and I got saved and started going to church, and like Easter, the Easter was big on women wearing their Easter hats, mm-hmm. you know, big, big Sunday. And I thought, I, when I read this, I was like, well, actually, they were they were being biblical, like they were following the word of God. <laughs> Easter hats are biblical because they said because it says to cover your head for women to for cover women their head. For, for women to cover, to cover their, their head. head. Yeah, so it's it's there's, so anyway. I just I was like, ah, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this with Nick and just. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's just I think it's so funny that that's where you started. Um, <laughs> it, it's it's such a serious problem though with the church is like they take the like we'll take one one verse and take it out of context Absolutely. and then apply it as biblical truth mm-hmm. when out of context it's not it's not biblical okay so truth. let's talk about it from the standpoint of respect and reverence okay so you know, not to to date, but so it's 2023, mm-hmm. right? So 60 years ago, 70 years, you know, the 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 40. I mean, the the mid 19 19th century, the 1900s, mm-hmm. it was very. Uh, you, they lived in a world where one, uh, just about everywhere you worked, you wore a suit, yeah, and or you often did, right? It, it wasn't so casual. Uh, fact is, it was a you know if you wanted to actually feel good about yourself, respectful, you wanted people to respect you. You had you know a nice tie on. You didn't. It wasn't a suit suit, but you at least had that kind of that that feel of like I'm a professional. Mm-hmm. I carry myself in a professional manner. I dress the part, or I dress where I want to be. You know, I dress for success, dress for success, so to speak. And they wore hats. Hats were big, right? It was kind of a status thing. And but they also took them off. You came in the door, you took your hat off. That was kind of the thing. When you went into church, you took your hat off. And there was rever. It was about being reverent. I, I still think it was. I don't think it's scriptural, but I think where does the line of being reverent to the Father? Is there is there a way to draw a line when it comes to our clothing attire or how we dress for church? But is it reverence or is it like um, just uh, 
need to perform. Like, oh, uh, when I go in church, I take my hat off because that's what I should do. Yeah, totally agree with that. Like, but if we come to the Father as we are. Let me just state for the record where I stand, okay? okay? I think that you come as you are. I think the Father accepts you all week long how you are when it comes to your clothing attire. So you don't, shouldn't dress differently for church. I, I personally, I believe that there are some who in order to feel better about themselves because they, you know, you know when you've been forgiven of a lot, it, your mindset is, is I don't want to look the part of where I've been. Right. Right. So I think that there are those who are like, I like to dress up for church. Yeah. I don't get to dress up all week long because I have a job that I get dirty at. Right. Right. Or, you know, we we don't have a lot of extra money, so we don't get to go out a lot like we used to when we were dating. And so as a couple, as a family, we want to we want to look nice when we go to church. Right. Now, is there a line that crosses where some people are like, I want to look like I'm something that I'm really not like we have maybe more money than we really do, right? right? Or we have ourselves together. We're really at home, you know, we're a mess, right? right. I mean, we have our own, dis- we all have a, an element of dysfunction and things that go on in our family, but sometimes you can dress the part where it doesn't look like that's the case. Right, you, like, you're like you just putting on a face. Absolutely, 100%. Um, so that's why for me, I'm like, come as you are. You know, like when people get saved, the Lord catches them right where they are, no matter what they're wearing, no matter what they're doing, yeah, it's the same. But the you know over the years, baseball caps specifically, and flat special, bills. And, well, flat bills sp- for guys has been that ongoing. As one who was in a former position, um, where I had to deal with you know I was the one overseeing the worship team, but I also had to listen to everybody's. Stuff, yes. And I used to wrestle with it, right? Because it was, I'm not about pleasing people for the sake of their opinion, but I also think we have a responsibility to make sure that we are reverent to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And so this scripture, although I wasn't like, oh, man, no more hats in church, it did make me think about, like, where is it religion and where is it relationship? I think it, it comes down, and you can't judge this. I mean, it comes down to the heart of the matter, like Absolutely. heart of the people wearing the hat. And and honestly, it comes down to the heart of the people who are against wearing hats. Totally agree. I mean, you know, if you, if, you know, you read, you know, you don't want to cause your brother to stumble. Absolutely. Exactly. But on the other hand, if something as small as a hat is going to be your breaking point, I think you have to kind of step back and reevaluate a little bit that that's what is going to cause you so much distress that it causes you. But Paul said, don't do it. Paul said, don't wear a hat. No, he said, if, if something causes someone to not just stumble, but if something offends someone, right? right. <clears throat> I mean, what he was getting at is like, it doesn't matter what you eat. Right. That's what it it's was. what comes out. Right. Right. But he's like, if you're with someone and they don't want you to eat pork, they they don't eat pork, and, and you, it shouldn't eat pork. you shouldn't eat pork. Right, right. So, I I feel like it's. I feel like if you dwell too much on it, <clears throat> excuse me. If you dwell too much on it, you can get really religious about it. Oh yeah, but I I do feel like that as I was looking at it, it really did challenge me to go. Where is the line? Not just reverence to the Father. But the very scripture you talked about, where it was, if you're in a group of people and they don't like something, they don't want something, right? Right? It's their opinion. It's not biblical. It's it's not anything about the heart of God. I mean, for Jesus, it was you know, it's not what goes in, it's what comes out. <clears throat> or I mean, Paul when he was talking about food specifically and just Jewish customs. But at the end of the day, if you're in a crowd of people. And you know that it's going to cause them to either question your walk, um, unrightfully judge you, or um, 
have this mindset of like, um, you know, you know, whatever. It's they're just it's just an opinion, but it's an opinion enough that will cause them their faith to decrease. Let me say it that way: their faith to be um, challenged. Right. Okay. So. I've, you know, I've, after reading and looking at it, I've really been challenged. Not that I'm against, I'm not against hats. I'm not against, it's not about what you wear at church. But more along the lines of like how we as believers, when we interact with people, have the mindset of, I may not agree or disagree. It may not even be a biblical supported belief system. It may not even have to do a scripture. But the simple fact is, is that do I owe someone the the do I owe them to honor something that's going to bother them and cause them and, and like knowing well listen you chose to get angry about that you chose to get upset about that that's your own self will that's your own that's your own issue right but I knew I feel like there's sometimes when we as Christians poke people for the sake of poking them. And that's just as wrong as the other side of the fence where they shouldn't be judging you or having that opinion about you. Okay. But what about the other side of it where if you, uh, I guess my, the other side of it is, is that what if you don't know that it would offend them? Then I'll think you're, you can't be responsible for that. So, it's just a, I think it's just a fine line. I mean, just another fine line. Yeah. I, I, I don't it's disagree. Just I just thought a, it was an interesting, I wanted to hit you out, out of the gate with a yeah, like. I'm, no hats in church. Hey, what Everybody. do you think? No, not at all. I'm, you know, I'm so against, I'm so against that kind of um, rules. Yeah. I'm all about relationship. Listen, rules without relationship is religion. I say it all the time. Yeah. I don't want religion. I want relationship. I want people to have relationship with the Father. I want people to have relationship with each other. Those kinds of things break relationship. Yeah. Right? I think that also is important when you're talking about what offends other people. Mm-hmm. Like, if I have a relationship with you, then I'm going to, I know what's going to offend you. Mm-hmm. And then if, if I, if, so then if I am doing that, you know, in your presence or in your, you know, company, then, and knowing that it'll offend you, knowing that it'll, you know, make you, you question your faith or, you know, that's, I think that's where the relationship comes in, where you would, you would want someone who knew you and, and loved you and valued you to be like, Hey, you wouldn't do that in my presence. Right. Absolutely. You know, you wouldn't, you shouldn't do that in my presence. Whereas like, if you don't have a relationship with someone and, or don't have a st- like even if you just know the person even like to like you know an acquaintance level even like you're not like invested in that person like you're not going to know that that is something that's going to cause them a struggle absolutely does it justify it probably not how do you think that breaks down to like the older generation and the younger generation in the church where people grew up with a certain way that church went. I think that, like you said, like it's, it's hard to, I mean, cross generational rules and religion is hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, cross generational relationships hard sometimes. It is. Well, I think about music all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, We've talked in the past about how we love music, but I think about music specifically to the church where everybody has kind of these songs where they had a moment, they had an encounter with Jesus, mm-hmm. right? And so those songs are near and dear to them. So, you know, I think about the hymns. It's not the hymns. It's the it's memories. The, it's the memories. It's the connection to it, right? Mm-hmm. And And I think a lot of times, not that I... Again, this isn't about hats and hymns. <laughs> Name of the episode. Yeah. Hats and hymns. The hats and hymns. Um, it's not about hats and hymns. And yet, you know, being open to welcome people in the doors. I don't care if your jeans are t- 
tattered or ripped up because I mean, you bought them. That you way. know, you bought them that way, and or you or you earned just, it. You 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 legitimately tattered them up, or you know, you're wearing boots, or you're wearing sandals, or you know, or no Crocs shoes. or whatever. And Would you welcome somebody was not wearing shoes. Absolutely, I would be amazed at how they did it. How they got to? Because I have tender feet, and I don't do outdoors. Oh, I can't do it. How? How? I can't do the rocks and stuff. I mean, I can do grass and stuff, but I don't know how people walk across rocks. Didn't you? Did you grow up in Brown County? Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. I wore tennis shoes outside because I was in the woods. We never wore shoes. We in in the woods. Dude, there's like briar bushes. There's get a couple of those in your feet. There's It'll animal get, poop. Get a couple of those in your feet. It'll make your feet a little less <laughs> sensitive. Your immune system is solid. Yeah. You don't need to get any kind of booster shots. Yeah. You're good. But it's so anyway, all back to Sorry. No, it's okay, but back to the whole point of like, you know, thinking about when we do things. It's not about pleasing people. It's not about people. And yet, where does the church have a responsibility to help people recapture, rekindle, you know, early memories, create new memories, open to, you know, c- cultural relevance when it comes to clothing and attire? And I will have, now listen, we're going to say it like that. I do think that their modesty should be a thing. Modest is hottest. Well, that's what they say. I will tell you that there is, n- there are not too many young men in youth group that actually believe that. And there's not too many single people that completely they believe, believe that. Is hottest. Yes. Flesh. In- anyway, that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> but being serious, I do believe back to talking about reverence and the hat being covered, not being covered from a scriptural standpoint. I do believe that there is, I mean, for men and women, you know, should be somewhat covered. Are you talking about clothes or hats? I'm, I'm sorry. talking about clothes. I lo- clothes. No, I second. know, clothes. You said, you said back no, to hats. And back to like, hat. Well, back to hats, but in reference to you hats. You should be covered as you come into the, the tr- you know. I think that you should be. I don't think, it's not about causing people to stumble or men to, you know, women causing men to lust or whatever. That's not it at all. I think there's just, I think, I think there's a, the modesty is, I think it's a reverent thing, you know? I mean, honestly, if a if there was a lady that said, you know, I was reading the scripture and I just feel like I should wear hats every week, I'd be like, cool, do it. Yeah. You know, and if I'm not going to, I mean, if a man came and said, I feel like that I should not be wearing the hat when I'm in church. Cool. You know, don't you judge someone chat? else. Would you wear a hat? I don't do hats. Well, okay. I, I look good. Listen, this is a radio face, <laughs> and I do not look good in hats. This is a radio face. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that one a long time ago when I was a young man. If I'm gonna now listen. This is a radio face. A radio face. So I mean I I I get it. I mean at some point you can't know what ev- what's going to cause every single person to stumble and everybody's got their opinions and everybody's got their you know core values and everybody's got their things that that may may maybe not be what's the word I'm thinking for like their convictions. Okay, yeah. Convictions. Yep. Convictions. That's what I, everybody's got their convictions. Couldn't think of the word. And you know, at the end of the day, you're not going to know. I'm not going to know every one of your convictions. We're friends. We've been friends for 10 years. I still probably don't know all your convictions and things that you're against. I bet you have a pretty I good learned, idea. I learn new things about you every time we in a, we're in a staff meeting. So <laughs> I have a list. The list of is Sunday, growing. I know. Sunday morning quirks. <laughs> I know. Um <laughs> And so I guess what I'm saying is... Can I just is, tell you? I don't. No, go ahead. You finish no, no, and then no, I'll you, tell you. Okay. No, go ahead. What I'm saying is you can't always perceive or know everybody's convictions or... Now, should you do... I think there is something about seeing the value of people and understanding that you shouldn't want to cause... Like, it shouldn't be a malicious thing. 
of causing someone to struggle. Right. Like if, you know, if it, or, you, to, to, pro- struggle, or to prove a what's, point. What struggle? Okay, prove a point. Or what, to what prove a struggle? point. Yeah. Like, um, like question their faith or okay. or stumble as in their walk or like. What if someone doesn't doesn't question their faith, but it's just, it aggravates them? Are we responsible knowingly when something aggravates someone or we know it's like a, a thing with them and we think it's silly and stupid? Are you making fun of my list of quirks for you? No, not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I'm honored that you have a list of quirks for me. I, um, I, and I guess I'm honored that I you get to add to them all the time. I don't know. I uh, I, I don't know. I mean... At but, some point, where is the fruit of spirit, the spirit of the self-control? Thing. Okay, so that's what I wanted to get to. Thank you. But if someone struggles, uh, that's there's exactly what I was wanted to say is is that where's the higher road? You shouldn't be frustrated that I wear a baseball cap. But if I know that it frustrates you, am I doing it out of self? Like, can I control myself not to wear it? Is what you're saying? That's the question. Yeah. Do do we owe it, but as iron sharpens iron, as we build relationship with people, do we owe it to someone to go, I'm going to self-sacrifice something that I believe is not a big deal? So that you're not frustrated about it. No. Yeah. I don't want to cause you to go into an emotion that you clearly don't have self-control over. And and I could say, well, that's your problem. You should have self-control. You should have self-discipline. You need to get on top of that. But if I know it's a thing, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is a, it's not that it's a serious question, but I think, I think these things matter to God because it's about our heart of how we treat people, even if we think it's silly, right? Even if we think it's like it's, wearing a hat's not that big of a deal. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't, I don't want anybody to show up and be like, well, I've got to take my baseball hat off now. That is not what I'm saying at all. I don't. I haven't had anybody say anything to me about hats in forever, right? Like been a while. Yeah. I don't have anybody say anything. Even I mean, I every now and then people say something about hymns. I feel like that's a different. That's different than like when we're in relationship with people, and they're working through their stuff, and we know something really bothers them. And they should have self-discipline and self-control on it. And it should not be a thing. They should be able to let it go. That's the, I think that's the point is, that I'm trying to make is if you know about something, then it's your responsibility to not become a stumbling block. Right. But if you don't know about something, I don't think you can be held. You cannot. You know, no. responsible for someone stumbling because you did something that was against their convictions or just they didn't like yeah. that causes them to stumble or, or, you know, experience emotions that they're, they don't have self-control over. You know, I think that's when, that's where I say relationship comes in because I can't know every quirk that every single person in our, in our church has or at work or, or whatever, work or anywhere, you know, anywhere in life, anywhere, you know, that's not my responsibility to them isn't, isn't to know everything about them. Right. That's their inner group of people. And I think that's like where I'm, what I'm saying is like your relationship with your, your group, your people. Right. I think that's where it's like, is your group and your people, like, are they coming together? They like, you know, are they causing you to stumble, you know, or are they going, you know, Hey, you know, this is something that I know Corey struggles with. So I'm going to make sure that it doesn't happen. Yeah. From me. Yeah. Well, I, and I think that so what everything we've talked about is like first layer, right? right? For me, the second layer is that whole um, it's the breaking of relationship because I didn't know your conviction. You shared your conviction with me, but I took it as judgment. So now I'm offended. So now I'm almost going to be obstinate to the point of like, I'm going, I'm going to do this just to act like, so I, I'm in the wrong. How they presented it was in the wrong. And we see this over and over where there's breaking relationships in church, at work, whatever it is, 
when someone shares their conviction or their their kind of belief in something, and then we go, well, that's dumb. You just offended me, you know, because maybe it was poor tactics, maybe it was poor deliverance, right? Or or maybe it was just malicious. I mean, sometimes yeah. people are just malicious, but you know, someone has an opinion about something. And we're like, no, I, I believe very strongly against that. I'm totally against that thing, that, that mindset and that thought. And the fact is, I'm going to now, now that you've drawn my attention to it, um, you know, the rebellious side of this is like, I'm going to do it even more. Right. Right. So I think that that's, you know, kind of like starting that first layer, but that first layer can be innocent, but because we don't know what to do with it, it then be, goes to the second or the third layer where this is what we see in the church. We see in, you know, see it all over. I mean, you can see it in work, but, you know, more from a church standpoint is that. Oh, all I see it. I see it at work. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But it's that breaking relationship, right? Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I was trying to think of idiosyncrasies that people have. And when, and, uh, and I, again, this is not about the list, you know, but it, but it is, there are some things in life that, that really does get in someone's crawl for whatever reason, you know, and it's less like, ah, you know, I know that it does. So I should do my due diligence to not do something about it. Right. Or not do that. I should say. Right. So, right. You going somewhere with that? I see you have your phone up and you're, you're no, looking just, at something. I just thought it'd be really funny to read, read some list <laughs> items from your oh, no. Sunday morning quirks. All right. Well, I'm going to listen. I hold on. I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to be offended. I'm good. You've read them to me before. You've probably had some new ones. I think you do that often. Um, Let's go I'll just read you, some, read you some that I think are really funny. Okay. Uh, chairs it. get him fired up. <laughs> they do get me fired up. <laughs> I wrote these. But wait, wait. But what about the chairs gets me fired up? Uh, you have very... It, it's, you're very specific about how you want them set up, and no one's got it right yet. I like them aesthetically pleasing... And here's the reason. Let me explain why. When you're the one preaching, and because we don't have a tiered floor, and because we don't have a platform that gets me two feet off the floor, right? People are, if you're just listening, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. But people have to do this all the time. Like shift to the side. Yeah, they got to shift around someone's head in front right. of them. So I like the placement of chairs and such that it, it helps people with that process. There's, and there's some other reasons. So, okay, what else? All right. Uh, don't hand Corey anything. <laughs> That's a, Listen. This is that, just Sunday morning. Quotes. That is just an absolute truth. Yeah, if you hand Sunday me morning. something right before we get started, it's not going to happen. Time, anytime Sunday morning, if I, if I hand you something, I, I don't expect to ever see that paper or whatever it is again. It's fair. I have no reason... I have no, there's, there's no reason why other than the fact is, is that my mind is scattered. And if you hand me something, I, I have no, <laughs> I have no clue what's going to happen to it. I don't know what this one means, okay. but I'm sure it's a direct quote from you. Okay. I'll oh, do it. Uh, don't make hot sounds in worship. <laughs> oh man. I think it's where like something gets really, really hot, like turned up really loud. Um, it, it it's. A couple things. So you know what I'm talking about. I do. When I, okay. I do. I do. And it's not just volume. It's like, um, you know, we're getting ready to start service. Music's playing. People are talking. And all of a sudden, I got someone on electric guitar going, you know, doing all of his, he's like doing stuff. Or, gotcha. or uh, someone on the acoustic is like, uh, chunka, 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 you know, and um, or, you know, someone's on the percussion, you know, pop, 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 pop. It's like hot not, sounds, hot sounds. It's just like, it's not the place or time for it. The hot sounds like vo volume wise, that's a sound person. Yeah. Right. And for me, that's just an awareness, but it, my thing is more about just the timing of when you're doing those things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? I have, I have more, but I'm not going to read them all. But I do have one that I'm really confused about. Well, let's, let's And I wrote it down. Okay. And it says no breakfast. No breakfast. That doesn't sound right because I want us to eat breakfast. Yeah. It just says no breakfast. Like you don't eat breakfast. I feel like it was because at one point you weren't eating breakfast with us every morning because Missy wasn't bringing you eggs. 
if you're honest, I think that's the, what it was. You, you need to erase that off your list because I'm all about us having breakfast together. And, and, uh, so, so I think that's what it was is that you don't eat, you didn't eat breakfast with us at, when we first started because we were like having like pancakes and sugary yeah. stuff. I can't do and sugar like that in like the morning. Pork. I need protein. Yeah, no pork. And so that's my own personal conviction. And here's the thing it's my own personal conviction, but that you shouldn't eat pork, that I shouldn't eat pork. And I would never want anybody to Just not eat pork. Me. It doesn't have to because I like you eat pork. Go ahead. And I'm completely fine. It doesn't bother me at all. In fact, is I love that people love to have pork. No, it offends me that you don't oh. eat pork with well, me. You have to talk to God about that. God <laughs> told me not to eat pork. And the one time after that that I ate pork, I had a bad case of gout. All right, you're gonna we're gonna unpack the story. So no, I don't want to. No, we're going to no, now. No, you I you can't. opened I, it, it up. It was a joke. Listen, it was a joke. listen, listen. So God said, told me not to eat pork, and I would, I love pork. Right, I love pork. It's like, well, I don't really like this, but okay. So I went a long season, no pork, and uh, there was one. There was one day at work we were having a big, like, big thing, big event, and there was some different things of pork, and I was like, oh, I really want some, and I just had a little bit. And the next morning, I woke up with this pain in my foot, like shards of glass, and I'd never experienced anything like. And so I go to the doctor, and he's like, oh, you have gout. Like, um, yeah, we're going to be on medicine for the rest of your life. And I was like, nope. I was disobedient. And I, I, I'm telling you, I told him, I said, well, here's the deal. I have repented. And before I left the doctor's office, that gout was gone, and I've never had it since. And I don't eat pork. Now, I do have bacon from time to time. But about a month ago, I felt like the Lord said, all so I don't even have bacon now. So, but you need to erase the no breakfast. I'm no, all I'll about erase, you having breakfast. I'll erase no break. Yeah, uh, I did have one that was like uh, camera set up in middle with good sight lines. Yeah, it's it doesn't make sense to me to put the camera off to the side angle. You have so many little quirks that like like the labeling of tables. Yeah. This past week, we were talking about in staff meeting. We were talking about staff and our staff meeting. We were talking about uh, labeling our tables so that we know where they went, which I said was a good idea. You said it was a good idea, but you're very specific about where we could not put them on the on the sides of the tables because unless they were in a very specific spot where they would not be seen by anyone. I did, and which is so weird. I know. It, it's it's just a very it's a very quirky thing. It's a it's aesthetic thing for me. I, I know I get it, it but it like is. we all have our quirks. We do. I I, guess. I I admittedly will say that I have some weird quirks. You know, I don't like smells of certain kinds, which is why you use unscented candles. Why I use unscented candles? Right? We talked about that. I mean, just we have there's just these things. You know, like I I probably have a lot of weird things. I mean, I shouldn't say it that way. I probably have a lot of things that people would go that doesn't make sense and it seems like a waste of energy. Well, the Lord slowly, I guess, he'll, he'll pull them away from me, I guess. I don't know. I guess a there'll work be a, in progress. There's a, there'll be a day when I just don't care. Whatever, man. I don't care. Put it wherever you want. Put it wherever you want. Label it however you want. Make it look however you want. Eat whatever you want. I don't care. But I well, when food, I just care about me, really. Yeah. No, I just think it's funny, and yeah. and we just we started the list as a joke, and I just keep adding things randomly to it. So you'll say something. I don't want you. I don't think we should do this anymore. And I'm like, add to the list. <laughs> well, what what on the list is quirks versus just opinions? No, they're all quirks. Okay, I mean, I like, I like it. I, I, I'm 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 actually honored that that uh, they get listed. And that you guys talk about them. So uh, chairs get you fired up. Don't hand anything to you. Uh, be there at nine thirty. Now, nah, actually, that one you have to change that because that one's that one's gonna change. Uh, what are the nine the little nine thirty thing? I'm, are you taking it away? I don't know what I'm doing with it right now. Oh, that's for another. That's for another day. Okay. Uh, don't scream during worship. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, like no, no. Now listen. Let's unpack that for a second. There are times when I don't care if you scream. Here's when I don't want you to scream. We're doing ministry. I just feel like the Lord's moving somewhere. He wants to minister to people. 
All right, we release people to pray, and all of a sudden, there's this screaming coming from the microphones. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on right now? I mean, I got people that can't hear when they're praying. I've had, they're like, what was going on? I don't think the Lord was moving because I was trying to pray over and they could even hear me and nothing happened. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Some of that's uh, awareness. Yes, I think. it is. But, I, you know, but what it is is it's commu- that's a communication thing where I say things in the moment. And I love that you guys write them down like that because it, it does help me. Like you have to communicate in not a core. You have to you have to work on your communication in a moment. Like don't just make a statement. Give the explanation behind the statement. Right. Give yeah. the why. Yeah. Give the why. Yeah. It's like, hey. This, this, and this happened. So moving forward, could we make sure that someone's, right? So it yeah. actually, I love that you guys do it because when you, you jokingly talk about it, I actually walk away and go, it's making me a better person. Like it's calling me up to be a better leader. And not or at least just, communicate a little better. <laughs> or communicate a little better, whichever one. You know, sometimes you just say things off the cuff. You know, it's just like, don't do, in the moment, you're like, don't do that anymore. Yeah, don't do that anymore. <laughs> and then you write right, it down, and then I have to explain down. what it is. So Yeah. I mean, we, we, have, uh, we have tons of lists. That's okay. For other people? I, like, yeah, I have you? a list of things that my wife said. I have a list uh, of dumb things my wife said. <laughs> oh, We'll save that for another podcast. Yeah, she uh, she will probably not like that one, but there are some funny ones on there. And um, one time I read them to the youth Yeah, of things that – my wife just doesn't understand geology or, like, <laughs> <laughs> where things are at. Yeah. Geography or geology? Geography, sorry. Okay. Geology. Yeah, study of rocks. Yeah. She doesn't, she doesn't, study like she doesn't rocks. understand rocks. She doesn't understand rocks. Who really does? Uh, but she like, so just like a hint, uh, just one of them, she was like, uh, Australia is not a continent. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> She's like, yeah, it's right. not a continent. We'll, we'll have, we should do this for another podcast. We'll have her call in so she we'll can have her call in so, so she, she can, can defend. defend yeah. So she can explain herself. what she was thinking in the moment when she said it. Yeah. I, she, I don't understand her, uh. Thought processes at all sometimes. Yeah. Well, do yeah. we really understand each other's thought processes? I, I mean, you've been married to Michelle for thirty-five years. We just celebrated. Years. Do you understand ago. her thought processes after thirty-five years? I don't understand them, but I'm not caught off guard by them as much. Yeah, I still like my wife. We've been married for four years, mm-hmm. and almost four years. And she'll still say stuff, and I'm like. Where did that come from? But a lot of that's how our brain works because, like, and she's you, had so many concussions. You're right. No, <laughs> oh, no I was going to say, like, I'll see people do things, like at the let's just say at the gym, right? Like, there's a there's a way to put things back so that there's some order and there's some structure, and so that it makes it easy for the next person, right? Right. And I'll watch people literally go take something. And then not take it back to where they got it, which then makes it rough for the next person. And I'm just like, what are you thinking, right? Or like when it comes to like packing like a trailer or a car, you know, where there has to be. I think a lot of times for me, like my brain is the structure and order side of things where there's a logical way to make things fit together or how it has an impact to people coming behind you. Right. And that's – and honestly – that that right there is a lot of what triggers me. I don't like to use the word trigger, but causes me or, or I will make the statements that I make because the illogical thing I'm watching or experiencing doesn't in my mind is like, that doesn't even make sense. What are you thinking for doing it that way? Right? So I make a comment, you write it down, and then later we get to talk about it, which I love. <laughs> But it is how my brain perceives things versus to them it's like, it's not, what's the deal? It's not even that big of a deal. Like, I don't understand, right? But it's just how their brain is wired. Yeah. It's like, like uh, emotional response versus logical responses. 
Like, Absolutely. Very. Lo- I'm very logical. Like this, like um, um, I think through how I'm going to do this. This is how we're going to do it. Whereas my wife's very emotional and like she gets, you know, she she responds out of her emotions. Where I'm like, I need to think through what I'm going to right. do, how we're going to solve this problem. She's like, I'm just going to cry. Right. <laughs> And then well, I'll figure it out later. Yeah. No, I totally get that. And and I and I understand that. And I think that's how you know, but but you need both, right? Like you there do. needs there needs to be a balance of both. And there's a time to be logical and there's a time to be emotional. Not not out of balance, but I think there's a definitely a need for those. So there's definitely a need for balance at all times. So Well, all that to say, hats and hymns are nothing but opinions and rules sometimes. Convictions. And convictions. I don't know if hymns are convictions, but hats are. I agree with that statement right there. (laughs) I definitely agree with that. Well, I'll just say, see you guys later. That's right. We're out.